Today's Palestine march in London was a disgrace. The police who allowed it to go ahead are an embarrassment. And the government that's led this country for the last 13 years is a sham for allowing Britain's values to be eroded away under their watch. And you want to tar all those who oppose these marches as far right, as extremists. You must be off your head. It's been reported half of today's march organisers have links to Hamas, including one bloke who now lives in a cushy North London flat, or house rather, who the US accused of running Hamas operations in the West Bank. Plot terror, get a council house. Nice one. And how do these people repay us? They lock London down with from the river to the sea chants, calling for the destruction of Israel while excusing Hamas atrocities of October the 7th. They tear down posters of kidnapped children, completely thick and ignorant to the fact that their hate-filled tribalism is the very thing they condemn Israel of doing. These clowns carry signs with swastikas on, yet anyone who doesn't agree with their worldview is a Nazi. Let me tell you, today's march should never have gone ahead. Aside from exposing Hamas as useful idiots, it's given the green light to extremism in Britain. They've emboldened terrorism. I watched people dying in the London Bridge terror attack of 2017. I saw a young woman with her throat cut, men twisted torsos after being hit by a van. I'll never forget that night, all the images ingrained in my brain. And six years on, that kind of extremism is still alive and well in Britain. And we must never let it happen again. Darren, do you agree? I do, actually, and I, I'm very sorry that you went through that. I can't imagine anything more harrowing than those scenes. But it really does highlight what Israel's just been through and how actually this isn't just an Israeli problem. Yeah. Right. This is a problem in Britain. This is going on here at home where we've got people on the streets who genuinely, in my view, are glorifying a organization, a terrorist organization that is prescribed in this country yeah. and actually seeking to vindicate the people that were responsible for the massacre on October 7th. I mean, it is no clearer to me than the fact that the day after the massacre, is when people started coming out on the streets, right? Yeah, bef we, before they'd even seen Israel's response. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So what more do you need to know? I, my mind was made up on these people from October 8th, frankly. Yeah. Uh, Albie, how did we get here? Well, we got here because there was an awful terrorist attack in Israel um, that was prosecuted by Hamas. And then we've got two groups of people, Muslims and Jews, who are the groups of people in question in Israel and Palestine who have got a conflict. And we now have that conflict playing out on the streets of London. But, but, but about the protesters in particular, because we all know that I am sympathetic to a ceasefire and I don't think it was wrong that the protests went ahead today. Look, I think they were disrespectful. I wish they weren't happening, but I stand by the British value of free speech. And Ben, I, I find it difficult that you say there's been 13 years of government, Tory government, and they've let our British values erode and, well, then, say you, and then say you want to ban a peaceful pro protest. I would say that is an erosion of British values. If, and I can't if, believe if, you're hang saying... On, hang on, hang on, hang on. If, if, if this process was a one-off, I'd say Yes, you know, I'm a, I'm a libertarian at heart. Protest all you want, but they've had four weeks of examples of how You're these people behave. Heart, but you want to ban a protest. How had, does that work? What they're doing is illegal. You can't chant anti-Semitic chants from, uh, from the river to the sea calling for the eradication of Israel, celebrating the death and the murder of civilians. You can't do that. Benjamin, should these protests have been banned today, bearing in mind the last four weeks, what we've seen on the streets? Well, as I've said on recent weeks, you know, I'm very much see this from Israel's perspective. And I don't share the view that those 300,000 people do. But I actually think there was something quite ridiculous about saying it was wrong for them to have this protest in a different part of London at a different time of day, not at 11 a.m., on a Saturday, where they've been doing it every Saturday. So the fact that Armistice Day fell today was pure coincidence. And I think it is a British value to be able to have that protest. Now, the problem, and it's a big problem, is that this isn't a normal peaceful protest because there is a considerable number of people on this protest who are clearly racist, who are clearly hateful, who are saying things that are unacceptable. And I think the difficulty here is that they have every right to do this protest, whether it's Armistice Day or not, as far as I'm concerned. The problem is the police don't seem to be able to manage the sheer numbers who are also just racist. Well, I just think, bearing in mind the disgusting scenes we've seen over the past four weeks that they should have, and bearing in mind, of course, it's Armistice Day, should have maybe reconsidered uh, Diane, thoughts? Um, I think that it's, it's a very 
interesting time because you, you say that there are racists, but there are also people on the other in the other group who are extremists as well, and they mustn't be discounted. Um, I think they're both racist. Yeah, they are both racist. And there's uh, a lot of misogyny, which obviously uh, affects somebody like me. Um, I, For example, after the protest last weekend, I was in uh, a service station and there was a large group of uh, the pro-Palestinian protesters choosing, choosing to pray in the reception area. Now, those particular services have a prayer room. It's Toddington North and they have a designated prayer room. But these people chose to pray blocking a public space and it was very confrontational because they were not friendly and they were eyeballing everybody. Did you feel frightened? Um, it did. It made me very unsettled because I got glared at. Mm. And do you know what? Like, I, I, what angers me the most is that I have friends who love Islam and love their religion and, and they well, make jokes Diane, about let, it. Let, let me just play you uh, a quick clip of my chat with some of the, the guys on the march today. Take a look at this. Do you know that three out of six organisers of today's march have hink links to Hamas? Well, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, no, I don't share that opinion. Well, it, it's fact, actually. I've got absolutely no problem being here today. Well, why are you all masked up, by the way? Why are you covering your faces? No, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a scarf on. Israel are just terrorists. Should Israel exist as a state? Nah, new comment. What do you think about the October 7th attacks? October 7th? I was actually born on the 19th of October, and my mum was born on the 20th. I'll answer that question. Oh, all right. Most of the people that died was military personnel and stuff like that. Uh, Darren, how, how are we meant to deal with people like that last guy at the end who can't even tell the truth that it was 1,400 civilians who were slaughtered on October the 7th? Well, yeah, it is really rather extraordinary, isn't it, and really quite depressing. I mean, I am utterly despondent at what we've seen on our streets today, and I would argue that actually the frustration that we've seen play out is just a microcosm of what we're going to see ultimately. I'm really worried about the trajectory that we're actually on right now, and I worry for, frankly, the, the uh, fab social fabric of this country, where you've got people saying I don't recognize what's going on in Britain and I don't share the values of these people mm. who want to eradicate people just because they're Jewish right that first it's the Jews who's it gonna be next is yeah. it the gays next and the left have got to sort themselves out on this they're all to shop on this point I mean I think Benjamin Butterworth is the only one with any clarity on this issue right now and that's not something I've ever said before so I'm deeply concerned and I think that just shows Ben, you've highlighted the idiocy of these people and, frankly, the, the sheer malice. They don't care. I mean, yeah. it's not like me to defend Keir Starmer, but I would say the line that Keir Starmer's taken on this has been quite good, too. Okay.